Darcy Allen. Number 42, senior Jamie Pendleton. Number 43, a junior, Charlie Myers. Number 45, junior, Brian Onkin. And number 51, junior, Don Boschella. And now the starting lineup for the ERABs. Number 22 at forward, six feet, junior, John Griffin. Number 32 at a forward, 6'3", senior Van Erickson. Number 24 at center, 6'4", junior Tony Mims. Number 23 at a guard, 6'2", senior Tom Vincent. And number 52 at guard, 6'3", junior Bob Vincent. The coach of the ERABs, Isaac Ike Johnson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, meet the team members from Collinsville. Number 10, a senior, Robbie Jackstock. Number 12, a sophomore, Scott Carson. Number 14, a junior, Roger McFarland. Number 20 is a sophomore, David Berg. Number 34 is the junior, Gary Kirkemeyer. Number 40, senior, Danny Dietz. And number 50, sophomore, Bill Mosier. And now in this battle for third and fourth place, the starting lineup for the Cayhawks. Number 24, a forward, a 6'4", senior, Don Osborne. Number 52, forward, 6'4", senior, Steve Ray. Number 44 at center, 6'7", senior, John Bello Bradick. Number 22 at guard, 6'0", senior, Rick George. Number 32 at guard, 6'5", senior, Kevin Stallings. And the coach of the Cayhawks, the veteran Virgil Fletcher. The officials assigned to work this evening basketball game, Ken Hungate and Delbert Maroon. So there you have the lineups. Osborne, Ray, Bella Bradick, George Stallings. That's for Collinsville. The E-Rabs have Griffin and Erickson, Mims, Vincent and Vincent. And Floyd Brown has got the action for you. Thank you very much, Tom Kelly. Third place is at stake here in the high school championships, 1978. Two very fine ball teams, this team from Collinsville. Certainly a fine team overall height. The Rockford E-Rabs weren't even together last year, and here they are playing for third place. Kevin Stallings, Kevin Stallings draws first blood for Collinsville. The all Mr. Everything guard. Full court press here. Just as important to win this as any of them. Ball stopped around, finally controlled. That's Rick George. It was quite a spark plug this afternoon in their contest and fighting in the semifinals into the middle. Bella Brady turns around and gets a jump off. Bella Brady will be going to the line to jump against Tony Mims. Tony is 6'4. Bella Brady is 6'7, but this Mims is quite a jumper. Fine basketball player. Bella Brady on the tip, but controlled by the ERABs. The ERABs on the move. Bob Vincent getting the ball across the timeline. That is Erickson. Erickson down in the middle. Back out front it goes. They're going to play tenaciously. Bob Vincent. That's the only way they know how to play at Collinsville. Traveling is called against Bob Vincent. And a turnover. I doubt if the E-Rabs will have faced any defense uh, throughout the year that'll be any tougher than this, Floyd. It's going to be a great uh, test of their guard, the Vincent brothers, to see whether they can get through this full-court pressure defense. I would agree with you. It's from way out, about 25 feet away. Kevin Stallings picks up his fourth point. Four nothing. Collinsville. 
And we don't know how much was taken out of this East Rockford team. They had a very tough game today. They never would say die. They came back and almost pulled it out against St. Joseph. Super shot from the corner. That was Men's. Men to the middle. Bella Brady can turn around. East Rockford, of course, still playing their zone defense that they play most of the uh, most of the campaign down here, and it looks like Bella Brady is going to have a field day. He's wide open in the middle. Griffin being guarded by George over to Bob Benson. Bob Benson underneath. Mims from the side, air ball. Bella Brady. Kevin Stallings, beautiful pass down underneath. Over it goes to Day. Ball is called. Here's a nice uh, lob pass in here by Stallings. Let's watch Rays. He gets the ball, goes up, fouled by Tony Mims. That's Tony Mims' first foul, but he was in the act of shooting. Consequently, he'll go to the free throw line, and he'll have two shots. Let's get Steve Ray has an excellent eye. Over the season, shot over 60% from the floor. Had a tough time in their first game against New Tour West when they eliminated him getting the lead off the basket, but he played well enough. They won. And then he finally found his eye this afternoon in the semifinal game. Had a fine game. Mems getting the ball over the timeline. This is Tom Benson getting the ball slapped away from him. The brothers, Tom and Bob, at the guards. Bob Benson now taking the ball out. He's number 52. Tom is 23. Deep down in the corner, that's Erickson. Van Erickson with the ball out to Vincent. And roll around, no good. Doesn't get the good bounce. Bella Brady being fought for the ball. The outlet pass going to Kevin Stallings. Stallings, incidentally, is second in scoring for the state tournament so far. And he could move into first place very easily here tonight. The only person that is leading him is out of the tournament. That is a choir. We'll give you a rundown on what has happened up to this point in state tournament play. Eight to two is the score. Collinsville has the lead. This is Griffin on the attack. He's got Vincent over to the other side, but he did not pass off. He had a two-man break. The ball is on Steve Ray. All right, on the tip, let's watch John Griffin as he takes the ball right down the middle of the lane, goes up, and there, you can see the foul, Steve Ray. Shooting two for John Griffin, a real fine performer. He certainly is a fine performer. Has an excellent touch. Tremendous rebounder. Listed at only six feet. He gets them both, and that makes the score eight to four. Collinsville still has the lead. Collinsville on the attack. Rick George handling the ball, getting it over the timeline. Over the middle it goes to Ray. Ray with a 12-footer, no good. Ball fought for. Vincent. Vincent again. This is Bob Vincent. Ball quickly. That's Mims. Mims on the drive. Down in the corner it goes to Griffin. Drawing iron. Doesn't get the good bounce. Excellent rebounding on the part of Don Osborne and a foul. Call at number 24, Tony Mims, and that's his second personal. There's a good shot of Virgil Fletcher, and even though this is for third place, Floyd, and I know how disappointed he is at not winning the big one, you, know, you can better believe it, he still wants this one. He certainly does. He has great pride, and he likes to win. Tony Mims picking up his fourth point of the game, and that closes the gap somewhat. Collinsville now leads 8-6, to 5-11 to go in the first quarter of play here. And the consolation game. <laughs> from 20 feet away, he has his eye tonight. That's Kevin Stallings picking up his sixth point here in the first quarter. Kevin Stallings looks like he is going to really open up tonight. Down to the corner it goes. That's Mims. Air ball. Beautiful control by Tom Benson. Out to his brother, Bob Benson. Bob on the dribble. 
It goes all the way along the base and behind. Beautiful pass outside. That's Mims who put it up and in, and the foul is called on Bella Brady. Gives the shot good. The basket is good. Right, here's a nice pass by Bob Vincent. As he takes the baseline, you can see the drop back pass to Tony Mims. John Bella Brady comes over his back and fouls. Stallings on the attack again. His little stutter step dribble. He almost looks like he's out of control, but he is not out of control. The ball is slapped away, however, into the hands of Tony Mims, who hands it off to John Griffin. And the Erabs are on the attack, but the call for carrying the ball is Bob Benson, and it's a turnover. There's the young lady who's rather intense, quite pretty, chewing kind of hard. She wants to see her team win no matter what. 12 to 8 is the score. 4.15 to go here in the first quarter of play. From behind, that's going to be Bob Vincent's foul, I'm certain. Correct. Here, here's, the foul feed into, here's the feed into Philip Radick. As you can see in the middle of the zone, he turns around and he was fouled. Was that by uh, uh, Tony Mims got Tony the foul? Mims, right. He was in back. Philip Radick going to the line. I thought it was going to be Bob Vincent. He was reaching from behind, but he did not get the foul. Philip Radick, who scored 32 in the first game down here against New Trier West did not have quite as much of a success against the fine team from Lockport. Oh, just excellent hustle on the part of John Osborne. Stallings picks up his 10th point. Griffin taking it all the way in, lays it up, doesn't get the good roll, however, and the rebound goes to Bella Brady, and a foul is called on number 32, and that is Van Erickson. That's his first personal. Third team foul. Kevin Stallings coming into tonight's game is averaging 19.7 points. 59 total points. Here's the Rockford coach on the screen. Rather intense. We talked with him a bit earlier and congratulated him on the fine showing that these men from East Rockford have put on down here. That was Ray going in. The rebound put up again by Kevin Stallings. Well, and he said his boys might be a little tired. Go ahead. Excuse me, Floyd. I was going to uh, mention about Isaac. You know, he played for uh, Dolph Stanley at, uh, I believe it was Boylan. Dolph still active in coaching, 73 years old. Yeah, he said last year all he had to do was to go over and visit with Boylan to keep his fingers into any kind of athletic activity. Well, he was uh, in the athletic department at the school. That's Bella Brady. Picking up his seventh point here. There's a timeout with the score. Collinsville 19, Rockford East 8. Let's give you a rundown on some of the scoring activity here. Kevin Stallings, as we mentioned earlier, has a scoring average of 19.7 so far, and that puts him second to Isaiah Thomas. Earlier today, Aguirre was ahead of him, but after today's semifinals, Kevin Stallings is second to Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas, incidentally, is averaging 26.3 points per game. He has a total of 79 points, and that's the most of anybody down here in the state tournament. He's probably the most exciting player we've seen in a long, long time in high school championship basketball play. Kevin Stallings, though, with a shooting percentage of 44%, has a total of 59 points. And the way he's taking off here now, he could be challenging Isaiah Thomas. The state tournament has many loyal fans who come back year after year, and we'd like to pay a special tribute to Mr. Wade Steele of Neoga, who is attending his 54th straight state tournament. Isn't that marvelous? That's great. Right, Listen, congratulations. I've got one, too, uh, Floyd. Uh, Mr. Louis Perrin of Moline, who has made every state tournament since 1930. 1930. He's 83 years young. Couldn't make it this year. He's a little under the weather, but says he'll be down next year. Well, that's okay. wonderful. And we certainly wish him a speedy recovery because he, we know that he's watching the coverage here tonight. The foul is called on Rick George. What a spark plug he was earlier today. 
he, he really makes this uh, ball press defense go. He's a very intimidating factor. He's very quick, has good hands. There you go, uh, Coach. Show him you still have it. That first one. Zach Burmaster uh, yeah, stretching out, showing his great reach. <laughs> Maybe he did play at Elgin. After all. <laughs> I've been hearing all those rumors. He's a legend at Elgin, a legend in his own time. Yeah, my picture's all over the post office. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Benson inbounding the ball, and that is John Griffin, who has come back to get it. Gets it over the timeline to Tom Benson. Tom goes down to the corner with it to Mims. Mims back out to Tom Benson. This is Bob Benson, rather. Bob, the two brothers, will keep them separated. Bob with the ball going over. This is Pendleton, Jamie Pendleton, who is in the game for East Rockford at this point. Pendleton from 25 feet away, no, nothing. Excellent rebounding on the part of Ray, and he is fouled by John Griffin. That's his first personal, John Griffin. Four team fouls, so they'll get the ball out of bounds. Ray will inbound the balls, and it'll come to Rick George, who will bring it down. Kevin Stallings has 12 points here in the first quarter. The score is 19 to 8, 2.29 to go. There is Kevin Stallings who gets his own rebound, puts it back up. Can't get it down. Rebound fought for, slapped in, but Mims on the control, getting up over the timeline. He's got Griffin down to the corner. Beautiful ball control. Mims on the tip. Finally, Bellabrady goes up and says, there's enough of that. Van Erickson reaches in, and he draws a foul. They will now be in the penalty situation. That's the second personal foul for Van Erickson, one and one. Zvelopredic will go to the other end of the court. He has certainly been outstanding, this kid Zvelopredic, for Collinsville. He's a fine scorer and excellent rebounder. He leads the team in both scoring and rebounding. Well, his performance in the opening game against New Trier West was uh, truly amazing. Uh, just a great uh, demonstration of power basketball. It certainly was. However, in the Lockport game, perhaps there might have been the difference. Farzich just shut off the middle to them completely there. Well, the whole team, uh, Floyd, uh, collapsed around uh, John and made it difficult for him to even get the ball. Two fine defensive teams we saw there this afternoon. They get it across the timeline. Van Erickson tries a pass over to the side. Kicking the ball is Steve Ray. Out of bounds, the Rams. Jamie Pendleton will inbound the ball. Griffin, almost a steal. There is a steal there, however. The foul is called on Jamie Pendleton of Rockford East. Well, there's not much question about this foul. Nice interception by Rich George. He's going down the floor, and as you can see, Jamie Pendleton, first and 10. 20 to 8 is the score. Rick George will go to the line. He'll be shooting one and one. Number 22, Rick George. A minute 50 left in the first quarter here. Tom, this is the uh, young man that's going to play football. Uh, did I hear him say? He's going to be a safety on the football team here at the University of Illinois. Says he's a hitter. He's coming to Illinois. So. All right. Love to hear that. Wants to play defensive back, safety. Maybe he'll be playing someday against your beloved uh, Southern Cal Trojans. I don't think we've got the Illini on the schedule for a few years. Great of us, huh? Rick George. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fortunate that the ball was slapped out of bounds on the other side by Kevin Stallings because he had crossed the line and he was throwing it back and it would have been a turnover. This is Meeks handling the ball now. Stallings on the steal, gets it, has George open. George on the layup, two points. Pendleton being cut off by George, two-timed by Kevin Stallings and George, but Stallings picks up a personal. They now go into the penalty situation. That is the fifth team foul. Jamie Pendleton, 5'9", 163 pounder. This will be his last game for Rockford. 
controlled by Bella Brady of Collinsville. Slapped around, fought for George on a long forward pass down to Ray. Ray stops and puts it in. It's fourth point here in the first quarter. 26 to 8 is the score. A minute 13 left to play. Griffin. Griffin dribbles, helps out. He's quite a ball player. He'll probably play guard in college. Celebrating with the rebound. Quick outlet pass as Stallings on the drive. Stops it 16 feet away on the jumper. Draws iron. Griffin, well, they are breaking them out of their pattern basketball anyway. We're getting a little racehorse here. And we go the other way now. Yeah, now we go the other way. Kevin Stallings on another steal, and he's keeping it all the way down the court again. Now he passes off, but he has fouled prior to passing the ball off, and I think it's got to be on Pendleton. No, it's on Van Erickson who picks up his third personal. Collinsville uh, is not a basic fast break ball club, but if you give them the opportunity, they will take advantage of it. They love that long baseball pass. But by and large, you know, they're not a racehorse type ball club. There are a couple of young ladies who are quite relaxed as they watch the basketball. Maybe they're waiting for the second game. Hey, Kevin Stalin gets them both, and that is 14 points for him here in the first quarter. There are only 30 seconds left. Make that 16 points for him. Griffin gets it across the timeline. Going all the way, he stops at the 15-foot mark and hits it. John Griffin picks up his fourth point here in the first quarter. There are only 12 seconds left to play the play. The ball is knocked out of bounds by Pendleton. Will be awarded to Collinsville. Into the game now, Darcy Allen, 5'8", 130-pounder. Allen is a freshman. They're going to give him some tournament experience. Well, he's going to get some now against that press, I guarantee you. Rebounding, Tony Mims. There he is, the young freshman. You can't find the handle on the ball. After all, here we are out here. <laughs> so there's the end of the first quarter with the score Collinsville 30, Rockford East 10. Excuse me. In the first quarter, Collinsville was 11 for 17 from the floor. They're shooting 65%. Rockford East, 4 from 18 from the floor. They're shooting 22%. Jack Rosenberg was just pointing out something here at the way the game is going we could see a lot of records falling in this particular game Kevin Stallings has 15 points just in the first quarter here 16 the one game high is 44 by Greg Smith for East Aurora against Quincy back in 1972 and that was in the semifinals down in the corner, it goes to the sophomore. He's going to give all his young guys an opportunity to play. Darcy Allen, and he scores. Quick outlet pass. That's Bella Brady. Comes back out to George. George on the dribble. 30 to 12 is the score. Now, Bella Brady on a turnaround, but I don't think that'll be any good. He had his fist up before he got the ball off. The foul is on number 41, right, Darcy Allen. Foul. That's right. The ball comes in. There's little Darcy Allen trying to go after Bella Brady. You got to have heart, right? He's 5'8", 130-pound, 14-year-old freshman playing in his first state championship game. It's, of course, the consolation game, but he's at the assembly hall, and that's quite an honor. Bella Brady gets one for two, gets it back, and makes it a three-point play. I want to see Darcy handle this zone press here now. Griffin with the ball high over his head. That's Meeks who traveled. 33 to 12 is the score, 7.27 to go. See on that zone, uh, most points for a winning team is 107. Quincy versus Aurora East. Aurora East had 96 Ooh. of that game in the 1972 semifinals. One of the referees ducks was knocked down there. The shot by Cedric Meeks is up, and it's good. Kevin Stallings with the ball on the pass inbounds to Bella Brady. The shot is up. The follow-up is good. That was Osborne. Picks up his sixth point in the game. Here's 
He did it. Robbie Kane, he beat the press. He, he got dribbled, it over. Dribbled right through it. Darcy Allen, I mean, and the ball is going to be going in the other direction. Do you think that's a Rockford fan or not there? She's <laughs> a yeah. little pensive at the moment. You want to know what the heck's going on down there, guys? Well, here's Kevin Stallings with a behind the back dribble, 15 feet away, drawing iron. Benson with the ball, and Kevin Stallings picks up his second personal. Kevin Stallings, 17 years of age, 6'5", 185 pounds senior. 19.7 average coming into tonight's game. 59 points, a lot of points. Don't forget we have the championship game to follow this and quite an exciting ball player, little Isaiah Thomas. John Griffin was 12 for 15 from the free throw line earlier today in the game against St. Joseph. And he's three for three in this game tonight. Make that four for four. He's a good basketball player. All right, Rockford's got their own version of the zone press going now. They did all right with that against St. Joseph this afternoon. George with the ball coming back out to Ray. Ray, Steve Ray moving it to the left. This kid sure has a fine outside shot. Down to the middle of Bella Brady, turn around jumper. The ball slapped in by Mims, but there's a foul call, and I think it'll be Van Erickson. We'll have to wait and see. No, it was on Tony Mims. All right, let's see what's going on in the middle there. Bella Brady gets the ball, and you can see Mims come over the top, but uh, Floyd, George, I believe they George. called that on, it was on uh, Rick George. On George, yeah. yeah. I think the foul was against Van Erickson, and Van Erickson is so accustomed to him, he held up his hand down there. He thought it was on him, and he's getting the shot. Van Erickson misses. He's certainly been a yet. Osborne picks up his second personal. Third personal. Third personal. Right, let's watch uh, Mims go to work underneath. He's really working hard on the boards, and Osborne comes over his back for the foul. I'm really uh, surprised at the uh, rebounding that Rockford is showing on the offensive boards. Tony Mims at the line. You know, here's a young man who's probably been just a little bit underrated because he's been playing in games with so many big guys around. He is quite a jumper. He's only 6'4", weighs 192, but he has been boarding at both ends of the court, and he has played just a fine tournament down here. Tony Mims, he's 17 years of age, he's a junior, and he'll be back next year for the e Van Erickson just picked up his fourth personal foul. Well, I didn't have to erase it. I put it down the last time when he held up his hat. I guess he was... Anticipating it coming. Maybe ESP. 35 to 17 is the score. 6.28 to go in the first half of play. Bella Bradick at the free throw line. He'll get one more. I wonder if the viewers, as they look at the screen, can uh, tell anything about the size of Bella Bradick and uh, Dan Osborne and Stallings. You have to stand beside oh, them before you realize they're trees. Yeah. <laughs> because they're so well proportioned yeah. and uh, you know they have a normal proportion so it doesn't make them look like they're extra tall but he's six seven and he's a big six seven too believe me good hustle on the part of don osborne but it's off his foot out of bounds and will be awarded out of bounds to east rock the rabs will inbound the ball meeks over to the side to bring it in back into the game bob benson and meeks is coming out but they're leaving Robbie Kane in there. Or correction, Darcy Allen. Darcy Allen at the guard with Vincent into the middle. That's Griffin, but he's going to be called for one. Couldn't quite find the handle on it. 37-17, a 20-point lead. 6.05 to go. First half of play for the consolation game. An exciting game to follow this one. Oh, they're playing. Hey! Did I tell you about Mims being a fighter? He just blocked his second shot underneath. He rejected two of them. All right, there's a lot of action going on under the basket there. Good pass. 
see the Collinsville man, 24, Osborne go up, and it looks like Vincent got him. Yeah, Bob Vincent got the foul. That free throw line will be Don, Don Osborne. Two excellent rejections underneath by Tony Mins. Don Osborne picks up his first point of the first session here this evening. The consolation game. If he makes his free throw, watch Stallings. Well, he didn't make it, so we won't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Stallings saved it out of bounds, however. From the corner, Ray drawing iron. No good. Ball kept inbounds by Osborne. Stallings into the middle of Bella Brady. Slapped out. This George over to Bella Brady. Shot over Mims that time. In for two points. Bella Brady. He now has 15 points here in the first half of play. Griffin on the attack. He's going to be quite a guard, I think, if he, when he goes to college. He's only six feet, and they have him planned. Look at the pass by Kevin Stallings. Kevin Stallings with a behind-the-back pass over to Steve Ray, who puts it in for two points. Mr. Stallings putting on a show here tonight. You know, I'm sitting here wondering whether I'd rather have Stallings or Isaiah Thomas as my first choice as a guard. I, re I really am. As long as we're dreaming, let's take both of them. <laughs> I certainly put them on my all-star team. That's Griffin, John Griffin, who puts it up and in. His eighth point of the evening. 42 to 19 is the score. Celebrating got the lead. No good. Fought for. Regained by Celebrating. Out on top, it comes to George. Underneath, Celebrating, turnaround, jumpers, four feet, no good. Rebound, Griffin. Pass off to Darcy Allen. The 14-year-old freshman doesn't mind the press, does I he? I like him. I like him. He goes right at him. <laughs> he certainly does. He looks so small out there, too. Griffin gets a good bounce. There's that long baseball pass. And it's a two-pointer. Steve Ray. You gotta get back. They'll take advantage of it. They're always looking. Well, they're loose now. Well, let's see what he does here. They've got him trapped. They took it away from him, however. All the way in with it is Victor. That's Tom Benson, who uh, both of the Bensons are back with the game. Bob Benson handling the ball over there. Gets it across the Griffin Griffin. Being guarded by Stallings, who goes for it, tries to pick it away, almost thrown back over the timeline, but controlled by Benson. Stalling on the try for the steal again. Turn around into the middle, slapped away, fought for, finally controlled by Benson. Benson up and over, no good. Rebound, fought for, Benson again. Jumper, the ball slapped, they'll get a jump ball. They call it a clean block by Celebrating. At halftime, Tom Kelly will be interviewing one of the high school coaches here at the tournament. Be sure to stay with us. The Cahawks are playing like it's batting practice. They're having a picnic out there. Well, well, like Floyd said, they're so loose now. They were loose when they were warming up. Uh, Griffin on the long we shot. Go. Here's my chance, my chance. Well, one out of two isn't bad. <laughs> Let me handle one next time. I, I... Coach, you're guarding us. You don't want any of us to get our hands on it. Well, that went my water. Who who knocked that over? Is he a ball hog in uh, high school and college, too? I think Rosenberg wanted to get it so bad there, he just <laughs> wet my card here. Jack Rosenberg, very alert at the ball. Think doesn't run too much here. <laughs> well, while you're mopping up, I can do a little play-by-play, -play, I guess. Boy. Well, there we have Bellafredi. <laughs> is hit from behind. The foul is going to be called, I think, on Robbie Kane. 24. No, it's now, called on Tony, Tony Mims. Tony Mims over the shoulder as Bellafredi gets good position again. He's really a workhorse on the backboard. Always in position. Well, I think we're fairly well straightened over here. I hope no more basketballs come this way. Rosenberg gets a little nervous. <laughs> I hope we didn't miss anything, Jack, while we were cleaning up. Oh, no. At the line. Fine basketball player, isn't he? 
Benson down in the corner. Coming across to the middle with it. That's Bob Benson. Pendleton. Back out to Benson. We have 244 to go in the first half here. Griffin. Big rebound by Bella Brady. Kevin Stallings with the ball now over the timeline. Not much scoring, but a lot of action going back and forth here in the latter stages of the first half of play. There's the young lady who's taking it in stride, relaxing with her chewing gums. Kevin Stallings from the Twilight Zone draws iron. Tony Mims with the rebound. Pendleton giving the ball off to Vincent. Vincent doing a little fancy dribbling, almost taken away by George. Excellent rebounding. Now it's in front to Ray. Ray cuts it. Steve Ray. All right, let's watch the interception. A nice pass down to Steve Ray and a dunk. Pendleton. Ball slapped out of bounds. Will be awarded to the Cahawks from Collinsville. Virgil Fletcher now has a record of 746 wins, 170 losses. One of the long passes went awry here. Maybe somebody didn't run the right pass pattern. They throw them like long passes, that's for sure. Cedric Meeks here will inbound the ball to Pendleton. Meeks and Pendleton out of the guards. Looking inside to Robbie Kane. He's giving everybody an opportunity to play. Griffin. This is Pendleton from way out. No good. Rebound. Nice job. Steve Ray. 50 to 21 is the score. This is Ray with the ball high over his head. A minute 36 from the about 15 feet away. That's Rick George from the left side. And Rick's got a smile. He very seldom shoots from that distance. Underneath Griffin and everybody hits him. Here's a, here's a patented uh, John Griffin move. Now watch the pass back to Griffin. He loves this move and he's quick right in there. And you can see Steve Ray though over his shoulder. This Griffin is quite a free throw shooter. He's four for four tonight. season he shot 70 percent had a scoring average of 20.1 I'll look him up and see how he stands down here in state tournament play in just a moment taking a deep breath ball bounds off the iron no good given to Ray he controls no travel Beautiful pass underneath. It's off the hands of Ray, however. John Griffin of East Rockford is third in scoring down here at this tournament. He has a 19.3 average and a total of 58 points in the game. So that's an indication of how good he is. Long pass to Mims underneath. Turn around. Loses the ball. Controlled by Pendleton. Pendleton on the dribble. Coming out. Being guarded very closely by George. Off the feet, but still saved by Pendleton. Down to the corner. George comes in from out of bounds and starts going at the ball again. He's quite active, isn't he? I'll tell you, Rick George gives you that 110% that coaches always look for. He never stops working out there. Rick George has just picked up his fourth personal. At the line will be Cedric Meeks. This young fellow plays in all of the games practically as the sixth man. And this is the first one on the one and one situation. George on the dribble. 52 21, 48 seconds to play. First half. Kevin Stallings in the corner. George, 20 feet. No good. Pendleton on the attack. Tries to get it through, but alert play on the part of Ray. Gets it off to Kevin Stallings. Stallings down the center. Tried to throw it underneath to his man cutting, Don Osborne, cutting across on the inside, but it was no good. So the cheerleaders see the camera and they respond as our camera the man moves through the crowd. Hollywood Howie, we call him. Fine cameraman. Up and in for two points. That's Bella Bradick again. He is some kind of a basketball player. 
18 seconds on the clock. Uh oh, they can trap him here because he and wasted his do. dribble, and they did. Kevin Stallings. Boy, he's a master at that trap. He certainly is. He, he directs that dribbler right into that two time and just super at it. We had about a 50 footer there that was no good. Griffin throws it up, but it was no good. It was in the air at the time that the horn was blowing. And now here's Jack Burmaster. Well, Floyd, it's an awesome display of uh, talent and power that Collinsville is showing this first half. Uh, who knows? This may or may not be Virgil Fletcher's last game, and I tell you, he's making it a big one. Now we're going to switch to Tom Kelly in Tournament Central. Thank you, Jack. After Floyd Brown's summary on the first half, I'll have an interview for you with one of the coaches here at the tournament. He should be able to offer some interesting sidelights in our coverage from Champaign-Urbana. We're going to continue after this. Uh, East Rockford Ball Club, and he said his team was a little tired. They played the second game this afternoon, and it was a hard-fought contest. And consequently, he's giving a great number of his young men to play, some of the underclassmen to play down here in this game. Collinsville playing very loose and they're doing a great number of things and they are a tremendous ball club. Collinsville 21 for 40 from the floor. That's a 52% shooting average. Rockford 8 for 29 for 27% shooting average. And here's how the scoring has gone now. First for Collinsville. Osborne has three points. Ray has 10 points. Melabredic has 17. George has eight. Stallings has 18 points in the first half. Now for East Rockford, Griffin has 10 points. Mims has seven points. Vincent, none of the, both of the Vincent boys have been held scoreless. Meeks has two points. And Allen has two points for a total of 21 here in the first half. We would like to say at this particular point that these young men are certainly to be congratulated. It uh, does take a little bit of the air out of it when you find yourself at the consolation contest when you're going for the Big Apple, but when 318 teams started out, it's not bad to be playing for third and fourth place down here at the state tournament. So there you have the score at the end of the first half, 56-21, Collinsville in the lead, and I've received word that Tom Kelly is standing by to bring us an interview. Here he is in Tournament Central. Thank you, Floyd. Down here in Tournament Central, I'm sitting with Mel Sheets, the coach of the new Trier West Cowboys, and I wouldn't blame him if we had a little feeling of deja vu looking at that score that Collinsville has run up in the first half. You felt the power of those Cahawks yesterday, Coach. Well, it's like watching a replay, Tom. We sat there and said, I've seen this before. And yet, uh, talking with Jack Burmaster, who knows your ball club quite well, he tells me that your team obviously did not play their game yesterday, that you really had a very fine club and a fine season. We, we felt we had a good ball club, uh, Tom. It was a case of uh, Collinsville was just too big and too too quick for us, and uh, they took us out of our ball game. We couldn't get the ball where we wanted it. Uh, Joel May had a, a bad day for him, but it really wasn't his fault. We had him out of position in order for him to get the basketball to help us out. And looking at your ball club, uh, quite frankly, coaches that I've talked to tell me you've really turned the program around at New Trier West. And especially this year, 27 and 2, you had one starter back from last year's club, May. So really, to post a 27 and 2 record, you did a fine coaching job this year. Well, thank you. Uh, you can coach a lot of uh, a lot of ways and a lot of things, but if you don't have good kids, why well, you won't win ball games. And and I just feel we've got real good kids that, that work hard and uh, uh, they wanted to win and uh, they were willing to sacrifice in order to win. And you won the tough Central Suburban League too, didn't you? Well, yeah, it was tough too. Uh, we got good ball clubs there. New Trier East and Evanston were really fine ball clubs. Mm -hmm. You mentioned New Trier East. Tell us a little bit about your rivalry with Schneider. I know that you two were teammates in Milliken. Well, actually, I got him through Milliken. you <laughs> <laughs> will love hearing well, that. That's you beautiful, know, Mel. He always tells everybody how he helped me out, but uh, it was the other way around. Uh, he lived off me, and, and if it hadn't been for me, why, John would be down on the uh, chase the squirrels. What did you do? Did you split with him this year? Uh, no, we won two out of you three. You took two right. three from him. We won the big one. Uh-huh. He's really going to get after you now for <laughs> saying all of that after well, taking two out of three. I, may, you... I may go home. My, my house will be burned down, <laughs> but that's all right. You've been to the state tournament final field of eight now, two years in a row, and lost in the first game. That's got to be... Well, what, do you, what do you feel about that? Well, uh, last year we were really happy just to be here. You mm -hmm. know, the, the, we were just kind of on cloud nine. Uh, this year we wanted to go home with a trophy. Uh, we didn't, 
Uh, but uh, like I told the kids, 10 years from now, you're telling war stories to your friends, you can say, we were at the state tournament. And right. Not many people can say that. No, you bet not of all the schools that have started. Let me run down your lineup here a little bit. Franz, May, Alder, Brownstone, Brenner, Patswalt. You lose May, how many will be back next year? Well, we uh, returned Tom Franz and, and Mike Alder, who started all year for us. And John Patswalt played a great deal as our third guard. So uh, I, I feel like we've got three regulars returning. And what about your prospects then, Coach, realistically for next season? I, I think we'll be strong again. Our, uh, particularly our sophomore and junior groups are, are solid kids. Rob Graveman uh, off our junior group, Colin Fardo, Jeff Van Pelt, just to name some kids. And, and that's just off the top of the head why I think we'll have a good ball club. Good. Now, let me talk about the championship game and get your opinion. Who do you like? Lockport, St. Joseph's? Tell me about these well, two teams. You know, they quoted me in the papers picking Collinsville, so it's a good thing I'm a coach and not a gambler. But <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to go along with Lockport for a couple of reasons. Lockport is, is uh, really very physical, very strong inside. I think that's where ball games are won. Uh, the time element, they've got the extra rest. St. Joseph had a tough ball game that they'll have to win it from outside, and, and I just don't think they can do it. The two guards are brilliant, but they may not be enough to get the ball back that often enough. Huh? Well, Thomas is just super, uh, and the other boy is just a step behind Clark, him, yes. Clark. Uh, but uh, they talked about him being the best guard tandem in the state, and I don't think there's any question but about Parzich that. Parzich and the rest of the front line, too big underneath for Lockport. Huh? Well, that's how I feel, yes. Coach, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Congratulations on another season. And listen, make it three in a row, and we'll see you again next year. Well, it's okay. your like to, Tom. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mel. She's Thank a pleasure. You. We're down to about two minutes remaining on the intermission clock. That means it's time for me to join my colleagues at courtside. In the meantime, we'd like to have you take a look at this. Yep. We've been entertained down here while the halftime activities were going on in other places by the Blue Devil Pep Band, which you hear in the background, from Quincy. It's a 34-member outfit. It contains 10 different instruments, including six trumpets and a trio of percussion pieces. Let's listen to them a little bit. yonder in New Orleans. There's a young lady who knows how to go out and enjoy a basketball game. She's give, offering us some ice cream. Yes, we'll have a bite. It would refresh us no end, I'm certain. Lots of activity, lots of fun at the Assembly Hall. This is the first game of tonight's session, the consolation game. They are vying for a third place. Collinsville is leading Rockford East 56 to 21. Collinsville, in the first game, eliminated Northfield of New Trier West, 71 to 56. In the afternoon session of the first day, it was Lockport Central eliminating Ottawa, 49 to 43. As a result of those two victories, Collinsville met Lockport Central, and Lockport Central beat Collinsville. Consequently, Collinsville is here in the consolation game tonight, and Lockport Central will be playing in the championship game, which will follow this. In the other bracket, it will be St. Joe, St. Joseph's of Westchester, Illinois, will be going against... Uh, they will be going against Lockport. St. Joseph's eliminated Rockford East, the other team that you have here. They eliminated them earlier this afternoon. Finish our chart here as we talk about it. 56 21 the score now, and we're about to begin play in the second half. Jumping center again will be Tony Mims going against Bella Brady. Tony Mims out jumps him, and then Griffin takes it all the way in on a fantastic layup. John Griffin, that's his 12th point of the day. He's one of the tournament leaders in scoring down here. 
Kevin Stallings went too far in and hit the bottom of the backboard there. Beautiful pass to Griffin by Ray, and it's up and in for two more points. That makes the score 56 to 25. Full court press going on. They must have gone in at the halftime and said, hey, let's not go out to disgrace. Let's go play some basketball. Celebrate it goes way sky high. All right, let's watch as uh, Collinsville attacks uh, Rockford zone press. Here's the pass from Stalling. Looks one way, passes the other. Fellow Brady underneath. Tony Mims fouls. <laughs> Cedric Meeks coming into the lineup for Tony Mims. So they'll have to do some switching around underneath. Obviously, Cedric Meeks is only 5'9". Tony Mims at 6'4". This is why they moved Tom Benson, who is 6'2", inside. Bellabradic, as can be expected, made it. Here we go again on that ball press. Stallings turns the dribbler to his outside wingman, set up a trap, and then they really go after the ball handler. They certainly do. We are happy to report that we're all dry around here now. The basketball actually came over and hit the table and knocked the cup over, but it was more fun to accuse Jack Rosenberg of doing it. Ben Erickson from the side, no good. Long lead pass down. Good hustle by George, but he throws it back to Griffin. And it's a turnover. Benson with the ball across the timeline. Isaac, the coach, is shouting instructions from the side. Meeks in the corner to Benson. Benson on the drive. The ball Sweet. off the foot of Don Osborne and will be awarded to the E-Rabs out of bounds. 59-25, 6.52 to go. Third quarter of play. This is the old number two inbound play coming here. That means that it comes out to Benson. Benson fakes, pumps, throws it up, drawing iron, no good. Rebound, fought far, off the hands of Osborne. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. On the pass inbound, the ball kicked out and will be, it was kicked out by Ray and will be awarded to the E-Rabs. Benson inbound to the ball. That's Meeks with it in his hands. High over his head, driving underneath. Down to the corner of the coast to Benson. This is Bob Benson throwing it up and in for two. That's the first score for the Benson family here in the game tonight. Kevin Stallings on the drive. Fake throws it underneath to Bellabrady who puts it in for two. Beautiful feed over to Van Erickson, and uh, Erickson puts it in for two points. They're playing good basketball now. They've suddenly come alive and really started to move. It seems that they were a little lethargic there in the first half, and they've gone in and said, let's go out and let them remember the E-Rabs as a fine basketball team. But Floyd, they're giving it what they've got. That's 100%. The coach can't ask for any more than that. They're not letting down at all, but they're just, you know, they're up against a super uh, physical ball club. Stallings the Chargers. That was an excellent fake. That's his third personal. An excellent fake on his part. But he missed the shot, and he drew his third personal. Ben Erickson with the ball. Over it goes to Griffin. He's got Benson on the side. Oh, he didn't make it. And the ball is called on Griffin. Griffin went on one of his patented moves that time, only Bella Bradick uh, would have none of it. He just held his ground. Well, let's watch it now. Bella Bradick gets good position. He's not the right guy to run into, I'll tell you that. Of course, Griffin is no small slouch himself, six foot and 200 pounds. Griffin has already tied the record for the most free throw games, free throws in all games. The record is 24, and he has 24, and so it is tied. Thank you, Jack. And Kevin Stallings from the side picks up his 20th point. The free throw was held before by Kevin Boyle of Burbank, St. Lawrence, and he got that in 1977. <laughs> Van Erickson guarding Ray, who will inbound the ball for the Cahawks. 5.35 to go, third quarter of play on the attack. The Cahawks, that's George, down to the corner from way out. No good, however, was Kevin Stalling's shot. 
Starling's having fun. He's letting them fly from way out in this game. He didn't do it earlier. Meeks on the dribble, maintaining his dribble, gets it over to the corner, almost to Van Erickson. Griffin on the control. Beautiful power yeah. move to the basket. He loves that side of the basket. The ball is called on Pendleton. Jamie Pendleton, who's in the game now, picks up his second personal. Fourth team foul. The next one, they'll be in a bonus situation. To the left, up and in for two points. That is Kevin Stallings. Well, both teams are playing the same type pressure defense, or almost the same type, but you can see how Collinsville attacks it. Uh, they have so much more maturity and poise and wherewithal. They really literally attack it and uh, use it to their advantage. How about a word for the um, Rockford East cheerleaders in the never give it up department. They are really down there still leading chairs. Are they? Yep. Gerald Griffin just to throws in another. That's his 18th point of the game. The ball off the hands down underneath of Osborne, but it's picked up and saved. And on the attack now, the Erabs from East Rockford. Griffin pumps off the iron, gets his own rebound. No good again. Bellabrady with the rebound. A foul is called underneath on Vincent. This time it's Tom Vincent. There are a few of the fans here that you saw enjoying themselves. Here comes the young freshman back into the game. Darcy Allen. They're in a bonus situation now. That was the fifth person. Stallings, you see, walking across the court, has just been over conversing with Coach Virgil Fletcher. On the attack now, Darcy Allen with the ball. He's only 14 years of age, and I uh, am always amazed. Up with Griffin has really found the range. That's 20 points for him in this game. Hawks get the ball out to Ray. Ray over the timeline. Osborne on the dribble. Griffin goes to meet him. Griffin with the rebound. There you go, Darcy. Griffin again. Beautiful pass over to Van Erickson who converts. That little freshman's going to be a ball player. I think that you and the coach agree. That's why he's giving him this tournament experience. Got to grow into that uniform a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ray from the side. <laughs> and he gets it. Well, what can you do when you're only 14? He's 5'8", weighs all of 130 pounds, and he looks like a little guy playing with the big boys. Can you imagine? That's Pendleton, who misses the layup. Bella Bradick, who just took it off, is 6'7", and he weighs 215 pounds. From the side is Ray. You've got to appreciate he's playing against a team that none of the starters are under six feet, and he's only 5'8". <laughs> and there's time out on the floor, and the score is Collinsville 67, Rockford East 37. Here. Since 1908, there have been eight undefeated double-A champions, and one of those, the muscle machine from Lions, climaxed a flawless string of 29 consecutive victories 25 years ago. Tom Kelly will talk to some of the LaGrange Lions between games tonight. Remember, we'll have an opportunity of seeing the possibility of another undefeated team taking the state championship. That in the person of Lockport, Lockport Central has been rated number one all year. They have now won 28 games, or rather, correction, 32 games. Excellent rebounding by Van Erickson, who takes it off, misses, puts it back up, and gets his sixth point of the quarter. 2-45 to, to go in the third quarter, 67-39. Beautiful <laughs> pass to Bella Brady, and Bella Brady throws it in. This is some ball team. Kevin Stallings and John Griffin are just one point apart going into tonight's game and total scoring here for the state. Kevin Stallings just picks up the personal. 
Okay, uh, Rich George intercepts here, steals the ball. As you can see, going down for the driving layup, number 42, Jamie Pendleton, comes across his wrist. That's his fourth personal. Correction? That's his third personal. Right? The ball is on Pendleton. That's why it's three. I Okay, Pendleton picks up the ball. Rick George going to the line. I am now at co-champions in the cheerleading thing. I've decided on co-champs. I'm putting the K-Hawks in there now. Along with the K-Hawks and the Ottawa Pirates. Yeah, yeah. Good enough. Before long, I may have an eight-way tie. Probably. <laughs> That's the one thing we like about you most, Jack, is you're so definite, you never change your mind. Hey, listen, you're the guy that hasn't <laughs> picked one today. You said the winner of the afternoon game was going to win the game. Well, that means I'm in there with Lockport <laughs> at this point. Pendleton with the pass back out front. The ball controlled by Darcy Allen. Allen on the attack being guarded by Stalling. Allen down to the court of the Joes. Pendleton from way out. Hey, he makes it. Join us up that little guy Allen can play. He's going to be a player. Yeah. I give Isaac Johnson a lot of credit. He's giving a lot of kids a lot of playing time down here. This exposure is really going to help his program, the tradition, and everything else. Of course, East Rockford doesn't need a lot of tradition. Under Jim Laud, they were powers for years. That was little Darcy Allen throwing one up from 18 feet away. <laughs> didn't have much of an arc to it, and he drew iron. The ball out of bounds will be. I'll catch the basketballs. You catch these players. I noticed that when, uh, <laughs> well, when the big kid, Osborne, came over and was about, to, excuse me, Steve Ray about to fall all over us. I'm the only one that put my hand up. Uh, Griffin all the way up. with a control shot. Foul is called on Rick George. All right, number 22, Johnny Griffin. Watch him. Patented move, and Rick George fouls. He must have made that move 100 times down here in the tournament. This could break the record for free throws in tournament play, and that's 25 total, and that breaks the record. John Griffin has just broken the record for most free throws. He now has 26 free throws a total. That's more the most in the history of state tournament play. Kevin Stallings on the drive with the ball across the timeline. The beautiful between the... Hey, here's... Meeks with the ball, and he's got a little guy on the breakaway with him, but Meeks takes it all the way in, and he draws iron. There's not afraid to get a uh, <laughs> 26 points now for Bella Bredek in this game. Griffin takes it all the way in. He loves that side of the line, but he travels. 73-43, a 30-point lead, 117 to go in the third quarter of play, and we have a whistle. Ken Hungate and Del Maroon, Benton, Illinois, and Altima working the ball game. Del Maroon took quite a spill out here earlier in the ball game. I just saw him fall. I don't know what precipitated the fall. A jump ball there. Excellent defensive move on the part of Bob Benson, who stood there and just grabbed the ball as Don Osborne turned around. And Don Osborne will be going to the line to jump against Bob Benson. Bob Benson is 6'3, Osborne is 6'4. Everybody's tall on this Collinsville team. There's a 6'5 guy who plays guard, Kevin Stallings, with the, with the ball, dribbling down in the corner. They've got a 30-point lead. What a pass. You know, that was set up, too. You could just see uh, Stallings with a little nod of the head. He calls charging on Meeks. Offensive foul, a turnover. That was not a popular call. No, I don't think so. Ray took the charge. Inbound in the ball will be Rick George. Ray with the fake. But his man, Stalling, had moved out of the corner where he threw the ball. It was there, looked away, Stalling went to the basket, and the ball is, uh, was thrown out of bounds, and consequently it's a turnover. There's our little guy on the drive again. <laughs> he doesn't rattle, does he? Griffin from the side. 
tell you, Floyd, from a strategy standpoint, there's not much I can say. It's really freelance, up and down. Or as we said last year, mill and grope at this point. Everybody doing their own thing. Griffin now has 24 points in this game. Rebound, Meeks slaps around. Meeks has it again. Foul is called, however. And it's got to be on Kevin Stallings. And I think Stephen, Kevin Stallings will foul out with that one. Is that four or five? That's four. That's four. Third team foul. Van Erickson giving the ball over to Griffin down to the corner. Who shoots? Oh! That is his 26th point in this ball game. 26 points. He was tied with Kevin. Well, he was one point behind Kevin Stalin, who just fires from 25 feet away. No good. Our little guy on a breakaway here, but that is the end of the quarter. And the score at the end of the quarter, Collinsville leads 75 to Rockford East, 47. I was just looking at the scoring battle that we have on the court out there. Kevin Stallings scored 18 in the first half, but he's only scored two here in the second half of play for a total of 20 points. And Griffin has 26 points, so he has taken the lead at this point. Now, here is that marvelous pep band that we were talking about earlier, the Blue Devil pep band from Quincy, all 34 of them. Let's listen to them a little bit. I like the Illinois loyalty song. That thing still stirs me. Well, that's one of the great college fight songs of all time, but I was thinking maybe they ought to play one for the DePaul Blue Demons. They're going to meet the Irish tomorrow, and it'd only be fair, wouldn't it? Yeah, they'll, they'll need something. Griffin now has a total of 84 points. Bella Bredic, however, has moved to pass Stallings. Bella Bredic has 81 points. He has 28 in tonight's game. Bella Bredic trailing by three. So the battle at this point is between Bella Bredic and Griffin for the fellows on the floor. The lead is, uh, was held up until now, however, by the young man you'll see in the second game. Bella Bredic has just picked up two more, so he only trails by one point now. He now has a total of 83 points, and that's 30 points in this game. Griffin just answers it, though, and we have quite a contest on our hands. Will you keep a running count for me, Rosie? <laughs> Oh, Kevin Stallings on a drive. Griffin with the ball. 77-49. 7.26 to go in the game. Griffin from 15 feet. He gets it. That's 30 points for Griffin in this game as well. Griffin almost on a steal. Osborne taking it in. Rolls off. Reed, but good. No. George it is fighting. Bella Brady puts it up. And he gets his own rebound and puts it up again. And we got a problem there on the floor. Rich George is... Charlie Horse, like I think. Yeah, or Cramp. 32 points, and Rick George is on the floor. He's been hurt. Yeah, it's a Charlie horse in his leg. Oh, they hurt. Virgil Fletcher is coming out to look at him. We got another one down here with a Charlie horse. <laughs> Pims has got one. Well, they've been doing a lot of running, and uh, muscles will tighten up great for quite a bit. Tony Mims down on our left for the E-Rabs and on our right. And Griffin's down too with the Charlie Horse. We got three of them. I think Griffin just say rubbed uh, me a little no, bit. Griffin is down there. He's complaining. Yeah. <laughs> he's a heavily muscled kid, this Griffin is, too. Hey, he says rub down there. It feels a little better down there. It's tightening up. <laughs> Griffin's got to be back in there, though. Mims is okay. George is up. Everybody's okay. George is coming out of the game, though. Rick George has come out of the game. The first substitution for them, incidentally, too.
Amazing how they all healed at once. Didn't it? <laughs> well, it was a it was a heavy afternoon. We got to get a little rest in here somehow. This is Vincent with the ball over the timeline down to the corner. Mims takes his time. Draws iron no good. Reaching in Van Erickson from behind picks up a foul. All right, here's the foul on Van Erickson. There it is, over the back. You can see it. That must be five, 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 five you, He's played a very fine tournament, Floyd. Reminds me of Johnson of St. Joseph. George Johnson. Lookalikes uh, about the same build, play the same way. Robbie Kane is into the game. Van Erickson had 40 points coming into this afternoon's game, and he got two here for a total of 42 points in the tournament. Played an excellent, excellent tournament. Correction I missed uh, for a total of 40 of six. Give him 46. 46. Well, evidently the K-Hots are going to try to hit 100. Well, they have him trapped over there, but not quite long enough to get a turnover. This is Kane into the game now. Kane with the ball out to Vincent. Vincent handling, going down to the right side. They're beginning to play a little defense now. Back out front, he comes to Pendleton from 15 feet away. He gets it. Make that, let's give him an 18 foot around that, huh? No extra points, however. Pendleton, alert on the defense, slaps it away. Robbie Kane comes up with the ball, back to Pendleton. Cross court, it comes to Vincent. Benson being guarded by Ray. In the middle, it goes to Meeks. Meeks driving to the basket, throws it in. Cedric Meeks picks up his fourth point of the game. Cross-court pass to Ray. 79-55, 559 left to play. And the consolation game here for third place tonight. Bellabredic turns around. Rebound, fought for, finally controlled. And here they come on the run, Robbie Kane. Over to Pendleton, back to Kane. Kane gets it. Well, even Collinsville is not playing much defense at this point. They're kind of no, waving at him. They certainly are. They're kind of relaxed. Bella Bradick way outside, waiting for his men to set up before letting it go. Bella Bradick has 20 rebounds. Mims with the rebound, and the record for one game is 21 by Norman Cook. So all Bella Bradick needs is one more rebound. And he will break, he will tie the record for most rebounds in a single game. He is sure to break it here tonight. Somebody put the lid on the basket on him here lately, though. He hasn't been able to convert. He's been getting shots that he favors. 5-0-1 left to play in the game. Pendleton with the ball over on the sideline. Griffin is out of the game, incidentally. As soon as I said that, he got up off the bench and he's coming back. Got a little rest. Beautiful pass across court, but it's thrown out of bounds. <laughs> Bellabredic just got the rebound at the other end of the court, giving him 21. So Bellabredic has tied the record. So we have seen two records, one tied and one fall, and we'll see the other fall shortly, I'm sure. Griffin has broken the record for most free throws in tournament play. And now the most for a single game rebounds has been tied by Bellabredic, number 44 of Collinsville. And he is also fighting for the lead in scoring here with John Griffin. The fellow who had the lead coming into tonight with a 26.3 average, a total of 79 points was Isaiah Thomas. And he's still to play in the second half. And he'll probably see a lot of action too because they'll need him to shoot over that zone. Vincent kind of lost his eye a little bit outside. It hit the iron and bounced out. game now comes Osborne Kirkemeyer into the game well I think Verge might be going to take him out one at a time now it's Kirkemeyer 6'6 six, six. he's played a lot for them this year 17 year old junior he'll be back Ooh. next year Vincent taking it to the backboard and the foul is called on Bella Bradick. all right let's watch Griffin again on this famous move of his down the middle if he had another three inches on him what a basketball what a college basketball player he'd be he, he will be anyway he's probably be good yes he'll play a guard in college and he's going to make things happen I don't know if he plays football but uh, we talked <laughs> about that before but might have the same problem that Quinn Buckner did when yeah. he went to college over there he was he's playing good. free safety but they said hey that's not your sport we want you in basketball and now he's a professional well the record is broken and he continues to add to them. That's 27 points from the free throw line in tournament play by Griffin. 
Griffin on the attack now. Rebound fought for, finally controlled by Kevin Stallings over the timeline. 79-58 is the score, 4-12 to go. Kevin Stallings just adds to his total, making it 22 here in tonight's consolation game. We haven't seen too much of him tonight. Uh, he's into the game now. Beautiful shot from the side up and in. Kevin Stalling continues to add to his total. He has, now has 24 points. This is Mims handling the ball, driving all the way. Excellent move. And he does a somersault at the end of the court. Okay, let's watch uh, the ball handler here, number 15, Cedric Meeks, as he takes the middle, and there comes 34, Gary Kirkmeyer, who just got in the game, over, commits the foul. Jack Stat has just come into the game. The cheer you hear is for Rick George, who has just come out of the game. Number 22, Rick George, there he is. He's been a fine basketball player. He's a senior, and this is his last game for Collinsville. At the free throw line is Cedric Meeks. Does not convert on the first one. But he makes the second one good. And that's 83 61. Stallings. Well, we'll see him on his one on one move here. Oh, he fakes him and goes around, throws up a beautiful shot. Draws the foul as well. Kevin Stallings. All right, we have to watch this move. Watch, watch him fake. Yeah. All right, now he goes, and Mims comes over. Comes off the wrong foot, left-handed shot, Mims fouls. Got hit in the head and he's bleeding, Jack. Got hit in the top of the scalp with an elbow. Oh, he's some ball player, this kid. Well, Virgil Fletcher is there attending him. Virgil has been the track coach, football coach, athletic director. He's a teacher. Might as well be the trainer. He'll give him something to do in his spare time. Right after this game, we'll cover the third and fourth place trophy presentations, and then we'll be interviewing some of the cheerleaders. We'll also give you a last-minute fill-in on the contenders and learn what their homecoming plans are. Be sure to stay with us. Kevin Stallings at the free throw line. Griffin with the rebound. Meeks. From the side. There's another rebound for Bella Bradick. He continues to add to his total. It's now 23. He's two over of the Twilight Zone, Kevin Stallings. He now has 26 points in tonight's encounter. Fine rebound by Gary Kirkemeyer. Stallings is really firing. Donald Brady getting the ball, putting it back up. Well, that, uh, they got to get that guy out of there. Yeah, he's got off blood coming down his forehead. Any scratch in the head will will bleed so easily. Yeah, he does have a lot of blood coming out of his head. There's a timeout with the score: Collinsville 87, Rockford East 61. The young ladies that you see at the center of the court who have been entertaining us, uh, the Collinsville High School cheerleaders. Now, how did you rate those, Jack Burmaster? Uh, they're, they're, right now, they're co-champs. Right now, oh, they're yeah. co-champs. Oh, the, the Cowboys brought some mighty yeah. fine cheerleaders over here with them. New Trier West on yesterday's quarterfinal game. We had an opportunity of seeing them play or seeing them cheer. Well, they've all done a great job, and uh, every year we see new routines out there. I can't remember when I saw I've seen more than we have this year. Uh, it seems that they worked hard over the winter and came up with a lot of new cheers. With 2.33 to go, it's time out on the court. Collinsville 87, Rockford East 61. We'll be checking the totals and scoring, and we'll be bringing you up to date on where they stand as it is going into tonight's 
final action, the consolation game in the finals, which will be coming up later. Isaiah Thomas was leading with 79 points. He no longer has the lead. He has been passed by Kevin Starling, by John Griffin, and also by John Bellabrady in this game. We have quite a scoring game, a high-scoring game here, a great deal of scoring activity. John Griffin has broken the record for the most number of free throws in tournament play. He has 27 already. And it'll be interesting to see just what happens at the horn concluding this game. Well, Virgil Fletcher was very interested uh, in what was going on over at the scoring table. I wonder if he was not concerned about the record you're speaking of uh, rebounding, scoring. As he uh, still has Bella Bredick in there. And he already has broken the record, and I'm sure he's aware of it, and so he might as well allow him to go on and get his names entrenched in the books for as long as possible because records are made <laughs> to be broken, and these kids get better every year, it seems, down here. They get bigger and faster and better. Except, of course, when Jack Burmaster was uh -huh. playing. Right. Our team would have been beaten. Well, I need to think how bad we would have been beaten. We, were, Danny, beat, we were beaten badly anyway. <laughs> Danny Dietz, Jack Stat, Dietz and Jack Stat are the guards now for the Collinsville Ball Club. The ball is called on Cedric Beats for reaching in. Another substitution coming into the game. Kirkemeyer coming back into the game. Bellabratic is being taken off. He has the record, a fine tournament. Excellent tournament for this young man. And he goes out of the game with 30 points. And even 23 rebounds. The record was 21 going into tonight. 24 rebounds. We've just been corrected by the official scorekeeper here. 24 rebounders. 24 rebounds. Ball rolls around and falls through. Danny Dietz. That makes the score 88 to 61. By far the highest scoring game that we've had so far. Into the game now. Another substitution for Collinsville, but we have timeout on the floor, and we'll fill you in on all the substitutions right after this timeout. It's timeout with the score, Collinsville 81, Rockford East 61. This is a great opportunity when they take this timeout to allow all of the youngsters to get some tournament experience, to get a chance to get out on the floor and get the feel of it. Sometimes it's important for people at home to reach high schoolers attending the tournament. In the event of an emergency, just call area code 217, telephone number 333-2923. That's area code 217-333-2923. We just had a young man to come into the game just a moment ago. We'll see if we can catch up and see who that was who came in. We'll pick them up for you. Kirk oh, that Meyer was uh, Charlie Myers just came in. Charlie Myers just came in. McFarlane is in there now, number 14. Number 40 is Dietz. We've got Dietz and McFa McFarlane into the game. Kirk Meyer is into the game. Jack Stat is in the game. Danny Dietz at the free throw line. good. The other player is Mosier. Now we have all five of them. They've got the trap out there, and it works. They force a turnover. Mosier gets the ball. Back now, this is Jack Stad on the attack for the Collinsville Cayhawks. Over to the side it comes. That's McFarland. McFarland into the middle, but a foul is called. John Griffin still in there fighting away. Right, have 29 you points. Go ahead. Have you completed your all-conference team? I'm not going to ask your all-tournament uh, team. The ball is up, and it is good. Yes, I did complete my all-conference team, but I forgot to turn it in. <laughs> I so I guess it doesn't count. Oh, I think they'll take it. Fine free-throw shooting here by Kirkemeyer into the game late. Back 
out of the center. Grenford taking it to the board, and he throws it in. I tell you, I just love that move that uh, Griffin puts on. 33 points for Griffin. To add to the already high total he had coming into the game. The call for reaching in is Charlie Myers. Into the Rockford East lineup is Darcy Allen, a little kid that we enjoy so much. Coming out of the lineup is Griffin in a very sportsmanlike gesture. John Griffin goes to the sideline to shake the hands of the players from Collinsville. Virgil Fletcher, the coach up off the bench, to shake hands with him. He's an excellent ball player, and he's going to be back next year to play for Isaac Johnson. Rebound fought for. Foul is called on Dan Boschella. Ninety-one to sixty-three. They're going for a hundred. They've got a minute thirty-three seconds to get nine points. However, well, we get, we've got to get a uh, little forty-one Darcy Allen a basket. Oh, I certainly yeah. hope so. Let's see if we can't get him two points here. They had a two-on-one break a little bit earlier, and I was sure hoping they would pass it to him, but. Uh, <laughs> But it was a fine defensive mood, uh, move on the part of one of the Collinsville players, and consequently, he did not get the ball. It rolls through. Kirkemeyer, that's four in a row for him from the free throw line. Bushella almost loses it. He gets it over. There's a little guy. Oh, they took it away from him. No, he comes back for the ball. The outlet pass quickly down the court. Fadeaway jumper from six feet away. Drawing iron, no good. Up with the rebound, and back up is Danny Dietz, and he draws a foul. Foul is called on number 43, Charlie Myers, who was into the game a little bit earlier. 93-63, 30-point lead, 119 to go. They can get on up there if they keep adding them from the free throw line. Dietz has hit his last two free throws. He'll get one more. He was in the act of shooting. 33 points for John Griffin. And coming into tonight's game, John Griffin had 58 points. That gives him 91 for the tournament and the lead at this point. Over the timeline, Darcy Allen, 14 years of age. We're enjoying him out here. Darcy Allen. Shoot it, Darcy. Oh, he's in there. Oh. <laughs> Darcy from 20 feet away. He was bothered by one of the Collinsville players. More substitutions coming into the game. David Berg into the game. Danny Dietz is coming out. Also coming out of the game is McFarland. The Cahawks controlling the rebound. That's Carson. Came into the game. Carson. His running mate Jack Stad. Carson with the ball high over his head. He has good height too. Turnaround jumper, ball slapped away. Oh, they call the foul. Darcy, Darcy, Darcy Allen gets his name into the record books. He anyway. did it. He got a mark in the page. You've got to appreciate that Darcy Allen is 5'8". Kirkemeyer is 6'6", six, six going to the line, and he was blocking <laughs> a shot on him. <laughs> Kirkemeyer now has five in a row from the free throw line, and that makes the score 94-63. 52 seconds left in the game. Saved by Kirkemeyer. On the drive, Carson from the side, drawing iron, no good. Rebound, fought for, controlled by Myers. Outlet pass. Throw it up, Darcy. Oh, almost. Now get back, Darcy. Well, 35 seconds. A dump. Jerry Kirkemeyer. That was the fellow that Darcy was defending against. Darcy Allen, the basket is good. And the foul is called on number 45, Brian Anjan. Brian Anjan. All right, here's uh, going to be another stuff job now by Gary Kirkmeyer. There he goes. He's up, and Charlie Myers is the, or who was that? Charlie Myers. Anjan. Brian Anjan uh, was the fellow who threw the foul from behind him, number 45. 45, right. Well, he couldn't convert that one. Turnaround jumper slapped away. And the foul is called on Charlie Myers, I think, this time. If they keep this up, they'll get 100 from the free throw line. We've got 30 seconds to go. 96 to 63 is the score. 
91 points the total for John Griffin, who is now the leader in scoring down here. Isaiah Thomas, we might point out, had 79 points, and he still has a game to play, however. This is Bill Mosier, who on the line, and he does not convert the first one. Bill Mosier, 6'7", 180. He's a sophomore. I think they don't attract ball players over at that school. Jump ball is called. Darcy Allen's not going to have to jump against that 20-footer, is he? 5'8", Darcy Allen going up against Gary Kirkmeyer at 6'6". If he gets the tip, the place will go wild. <laughs> He got up pretty high anyway. From 20 feet away, drawing iron, no good. Mosier with the ball, over it goes. 19 seconds left to play, 96-63 is the score. Darcy Allen handled the ball, over it goes. That's Bushella, back out to Allen. 10 seconds, they want him to shoot. Eight seconds from the corner, and he hits it. Bill Anjan gets his name into the book on the scoring column. And so now we have a final, and we have a third-place finisher. The winner, Collinsville, 96 to 65. Here's Tom Kelly. Thank you, Floyd. A rousing victory for the Collinsville Cahawks, who were just that close to playing for the championship here as they lost this afternoon to Lockport, 55-53. A high-powered, big offensive team that Virgil Fletcher brought here to Champaign-Urbana in the field of eight. Had one defeat at the hands of Lockport. Unbeaten, of course, Lockport. And considered among the very best, if not the best team in the state coming into this tournament, is the only thing to mar what could have been a very memorable visit by Virgil Fletcher and the Cahawks here to Champaign, trying to become the third man to win three state titles. He was victorious in that regard in 61 and again in 65. And he is making his 14th state tournament appearance. So Virgil Fletcher with over 700 victories, a man that came just that close and his basketball team a big high-powered outfit, but consider that Stallings, George, Bellabradic, Ray, and Osborne are all seniors. They're about ready to present the third and fourth place trophies. For this, we're gonna switch out to Harry Fitzhugh the Executive Secretary of the Illinois High School Association. Executive Secretary of the Illinois High School Association. Thank you, Tom. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce Mr. Don Mellon, the principal of Pittsfield High School, Pittsfield, Illinois, and vice president of the board of directors of the Illinois High School Association. Mr. Mellon will present the third and fourth place team trophies and individual awards. In his presentation, Don will be assisted by the following colleagues. Mr. Dave McClintock, principal of Nashville High School, member of the board of directors. <laughs> Mr. L.L. L. Astroff, assistant executive secretary of the Illinois High School Association. And Mr. Ray Collier, the principal of Roar East High School and treasurer of the association. Don. Thank you, Mr. Fitzhugh. <clears throat> And it is with a great deal of pride and pleasure that we are here to represent all of the high schools in Illinois that make up the fine Illinois High School Association. To the players of Rockford East, to the players of Collinsville, three weeks ago, when the regional tournaments began, there were 240 class AA high school teams aspiring to reach this assembly hall. Today, there were only four. So by any definition of the word, you are truly all winners, you're truly all champions. And to that, our congratulations. And we should like to extend those congratulations to your coaches, your cheerleaders, your parents, the other students in your school, and all of the fans that have made your season, your season so successful and so enjoyable. And now we should like to 
uh, present the individual player awards later, but I should at this time like to present your coach with his. So from the Rockford East, ERABs, will Coach Isaac Johnson please come forth? <laughs> coach Johnson, congratulations for a fine tribute. Congratulations. And if we may have the captains or representatives from the Rockford East ERAB team, Will you come forth, please? <laughs> Gentlemen, on behalf of the Illinois High School Association, it is our pride and privilege to present to you fourth place, class AA basketball, Illinois High School. And now for third place, if Coach Virgil Fletcher would come forward, please. Coach Fletcher, congratulations, sir, on a fine season. And now if we may have the captains or representatives from the Collinsville Cayhawks, Gentlemen, on behalf of the Illinois High School Association, it is our pride and privilege to present to you this trophy, symbolic of your third place finish, 1978 Class AA basketball. Gentlemen, congratulations. Thank you, Don. And congratulations to these two very fine basketball teams. And now, in just a few minutes, our championship game will get underway. Thank you. That was Mr. Harry Fitzhugh, and you saw the presentations for third and fourth place. Now let's go to Floyd Brown in Tournament Central. Thank you very much, Tom. And I'll have a summary for you on the game in just a few moments, and then we'll get started on all the special features we promised. We'll continue from Champaign-Urbana after this. Okay, Sue. At the beginning, there were 318 teams entering into the state championship for the Class AA IHSA basketball this year. And we have a third and fourth place team at this point. And believe me, it's quite an honor. Going into tonight's game, both of them wanted to be in the finals, which will be coming up next. Consequently, there might have been just a little bit less enthusiasm going into it, but once they're into the game, they want to win. Third is better than fourth, and believe me, with each coming week, each coming year, this victory will be more important. It's good to just get downstate, and to come this far is even more exciting. And as the years progress, I'm sure they'll look back on this as one of the happiest times of their lives. Collinsville, the winner in this game, they won by a score of 96 to 65 over East Rockford. They are third place finishers. Fourth place goes to East Rockford. And we can't say enough about what they've done in just one year with their program over there. They did not even have a team last year. Isaac, uh, the coach over there, sir, should certainly be congratulated. And we give our congratulations to him. Isaac Johnson, his first year as coach, who is now 21 and 10. Collinsville shot 36 of 76 from the floor for 474 shooting percentages. Rockford, 28 of 65 for a 43% shooting percentage. We had a couple of records to fall tonight. Marvelous player for this East Rockford team. Uh, his name is John Griffin, six feet. He's a junior. He'll be back next year. And he is now the leading scorer in the tournament going into the final game. Of course, uh, the leader prior to tonight's game, well, Isaac Thomas will be in action during the next game. But he broke the record for most free throws in the tournament. And his uh, total tonight sets the record. He had a total of 27, I think, was the final on that. 27. And the most rebounds, of course, two were uh, broken tonight by Bella Brady. Here now are the stats on the scoring. For Collinsville first, 
It was Osborne with three, Ray had 14, Bella Brady 32, George had 10, Stallings 28, Dietz 2, Kirkemeyer had 7. For Rockford East, here they are appearing on your screen. Griffin had 33, Erickson 6, Mem 7, Kane 4, Bob Benson had 2, Meeks had 5, Pendleton had 4. And our congratulations to these fine young men. They played fine basketball. It's been an excellent tournament, and we've still got more exciting basketball coming.